All right, and it looks like we are live. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Daily Digital Show. My name is Junior, and I would like to welcome you all back so that we can have a wonderful show again. Today's date is Wednesday, August the 24th, uh, and I am here just to kind of, you know, give you all the scoop of what's going down in our digital world, all this new technology that's um, that's been all the craze, even just in the past year, uh, even though they've been happening for quite some time now. Uh, which is actually one of my first articles that we have here to touch on today. It's going to be about 2019, 2020, right before the pandemic happened. A company has actually flown a drone inside the human body. Exactly. Um, so the next one after that is going to be about the Board Ape Yacht Club, BAYC owners, NFT holders are kind of in hot water, especially if they was uh, able to take out loans out inside of... Um, a specific DAO. And then we have the word of the week again. Today is Wednesday. So we've got the word of the week, which is going to be IPFS. If you have not heard of that before, definitely stay tuned for that. Then also we have a web browser that's called Osiris. And Osiris is a different kind of web browser. Uh, one main key thing about that is that it actually blocks all of the ads from spamming you pretty much when you're browsing the web. And then the last thing that I have for you guys today is PlayStation. PlayStation has officially announced its um, release date for its newest VR headset. I think it's just called the PSVR number two or something like that. So stay tuned for all of that and then uh, we'll get right into it. All right. And it looks like we are back. So as I mentioned, the first thing that we've got off the block here today is going to be in the medicine field, um, this article came out July 24th, 2022. But as I mentioned, this company has been around since 2019, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but the title of this article is Medicine and the Metaverse. So once I saw that, I initially thought it was going to be all about the metaverse. And it's kind of strange. It's not really so much as far as the metaverse. I, I think they're really just playing on a name at this point. Um, but I can kind of see why they're saying inside the metaverse or whatever because um you can actually probably use a vr headset to view whatever they're viewing you'll you'll see what i'm talking about here in a short second um but yeah new tech allows doctors to travel inside of your body um so yeah so you see this little pill here this pill is actually swallowed by human beings and then inside of it actually i think they have a better I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so they have, they're calling it the pill by, well, actually, let's just get the company name first. So you guys know exactly who is in charge of creating this. Um, there it is. India, India Tix, India Tix, E-N-D-I-A-T-X. And this company has created what they call the pill bot. Mr. Tory Smith, he is a CEO, founder of all of this. Uh, new technology and basically what's going on is that you're gonna have to swallow this pill here and I mean, when you see I have a video also for you guys so when you see this video you'll see like how, how large <laughs> this pill actually is this one actually looks pretty small so maybe from the first version back in 2019 to this version over here it may have shrunk in size um, but I also have another yeah, I think this is kind of like the inner workings of everything, how it, how it all works out. Um, of course, there's a camera in there because it has to see inside your body. They're calling this a drone, a um, telepresence drone that's for inhuman travel. Um, and then also these here, I'm assuming these are like propellers. It's going to actually float through the body. Uh, they're actually using just a standard Xbox controller to control this. Um yeah, I mean, this is this is this right here is actually really, really wild. Um, as, as I mentioned here, he was inspired by as a kid by a sci fi movie called Inner Space. Um, so, yeah, definitely <laughs> be careful what you guys let your kids watch at, at whatever age, because you never know what they can be inspired by. I mean, heck, he came out to be a pretty successful, smart human being. So nothing wrong with that. But uh, just be advised if, if you have children out there. Um so yeah, so as it says here, not only is his company on its way to bringing the capability of 
all of this to healthcare as a shipping product, but Tori himself was the first person on the planet to have a robotic drone flown around inside of his stomach. Uh, he volunteered swallowing the first prototype that made a true fantastic voyage. I have that video here to play for you guys as well. Of course, they documented it. Uh, since the last test, others have also, uh, I guess other people that he worked with have also tried it out as well. Um, and basically, they're going to take video of inside of your body and this video can be viewed by a doctor, like real time live video right there on their cell phone. Um, or it could be, you know, viewed later on as well. I think they had a couple of benefits of how this would help. Um, uh, where was that at? Um, yeah, so it's all about not having to book appointment, not having to wait weeks to be seen, not having to take off work, not having to drive to a clinic and finding my parking spot, you know, it kind of goes down the line of, of stuff like that. And man, where was that? Oh yeah, here it is. So faster, cheaper, more accurate screenings. So Yeah, everything's gonna be done real time on a PC or a phone. India Ticks believes the robotic pills can be manufactured for $25 each and then sold for hundreds of dollars per unit and save money thousands of dollars in medical expensive that endoscopic procedures cost to perform under sedation. But more importantly, the company believes that PillBots will save many lives by enabling faster and cheaper screening that finds serious conditions sooner than would otherwise uh, be practical. Um, so yeah, so I wanna actually just go ahead and play the video for you guys here. It's a long video, so I'm gonna just scrub through it as much as I can, but I wanna show you guys what this kind of looks like here. <laughs> let's see what happens. All right, so let's get a little, you know, a little power check. check. Power All right, check. so we're a little hazy, but you know what? We've got, got motors. Yep, let's do it. All right, guys. Look how big that is. Down the hatch. Alright, so you guys can actually see he is drinking it. And then I'm gonna scrub through so you can see. Yeah, it's uh not if you want me to like turn around and back up now. That is dead. whoa! Alright, so now I back I backed up. See other you got something hanging in the middle of your Oof. belly there. <laughs> whoa, is that a tape? <laughs> what is that thing? <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna rotate over and see if I can go look at that again. So I'm gonna go backwards. There we go. I'm moving backwards. Okay, now I can go forward. We're actually getting actual features. Yeah. I'm going to go to the right. Now you can see he's just using a standard Xbox controller. Mm -hmm. Let me go back and see that feature. So. Okay. The stomach has a texture. Get great video. And complete control. Like I am driving all over yeah. your center. Front to back. Up. And it's crazy because I just saw the cat walk over everything. So like the resolution we're playing with right now is literally just like anything to get started. But yeah, I just saw the cat walk over and I'm thinking, you know, like this is an actual, you know, medical procedure or something like that. But this is this is literally being done inside this guy's living room and you know, there's <laughs> Nothing sanitary about it at all. Um, and that's just crazy. See, I don't think they really get to see too, too much. I think that, that one thing they saw earlier was about it. But yeah, so let me know what you guys definitely think about that one. I don't know if I myself would be open to swallowing some sort of pill that'll actually look inside my entire body. It actually, actually reminds me of a show called The Rugrats, and they had an episode... Uh, when they actually kind of shrunk themselves and went inside, I think it was a dog's body. Um, or they were supposed to go inside another body, but then ended up in a dog or something like that. I can't remember the whole details, but um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's really, really interesting how technology works. I have never thought drones would be used in that way, but um, yeah, the things people can come up with, if you got a vision for it, it can definitely happen.
All right, so the next thing that I have on the block here is Board Ape Yacht Club, and not just Board Ape Yacht Club. Let me not, let me stop saying that. So there's a company called Bend Dow. Um, they are more of a decentralized um, lending platform for uh, NFTs and stuff like that. There are a couple of centralized ones out there. Um, Celsius is one of them. Uh, I think BlockFi is, BlockFi is also another one, there, but they're more centralized lending platforms for you know people who want to leverage their um, assets, um, allow someone else to hold on to it, and then get money from it, quote unquote. Uh, most of the time, it's going to be cryptocurrency that they're going to be holding, so they can do whatever they want with it, uh, and then after that, they'll pay off their loan that they you know basically borrowed and get their collateral back. Their collateral just being that asset. Ben Dow is just a um, um, decentralized way of doing that. So use your NFT as collateral to borrow ETH or deposit your ETH and earn yields instantly. Um, and I think I went down here. Yeah, so Ben is a decentralized non-custodial NFT backed borrowing and lending protocol where users can participate as depositors or borrowers. Depositors provide ETH liquidity to the lending pool to earn a passive income while borrowers are able to borrow ETH through lending pool using NFT as collateral instantly. And so what ended up happening, and I got this article here, what ended up happening is that I guess a lot of people actually borrowed ETH and put up their, you know, their um, NFTs, their Board Ape Yacht Club, their mutant apes and stuff like that as collateral. But then as the market took a wild turn, all of their ETH that they, you know, borrowed or whatever was worth less. Uh, the investment that they made probably didn't pan out as they thought it would. And then when it came back time to actually pay off those loans, they did not have enough funds to actually do so. And then I guess this Ben Dow actually gave them everybody, it looks like 48 hours, I think, 48 hours to pay back their their loans and if they couldn't they they, I mean, they pretty much got liquidated um and i make sure i drop the link for this article here for you guys as well to check out and uh yeah it says one of the most popular lending platforms ben dow yeah total value of crypto assets locked inside of ben dow's protocol dropped by 50 percent to to around 41 million during the weekend Okay, yeah, so this is what I wanted to look at here. The amount of Ether that NFT borrow owners can borrow on the platform is anywhere between 30 to 40% of the NFT's floor price on Bandao, which is the lowest set amount a bidder is eligible, eligible to buy an NFT from a collection. NFTs from the Board 8 Yacht Club collection make up about 68% of the assets that serve as collateral on the Bandao platform, while other 16% is from Mutant 8 Yacht Club tokens. Um, the DeFi peer-to-peer -peer platform enables NFT holders to borrow cryptocurrency such as Ether without forcing them to cede control of the assets. Meanwhile, Ether holders can lend out their tokens through the protocol and earn interest on it. Uh, that is something I probably would actually do. <clears throat> Unlike centralized crypto lenders like yeah, Celsius and BlockFi, those are the ones I mentioned, the DAO allows participants to collectively vote for changes in the protocol's code. And this is pretty much exactly what happened. Um, the protocol has stipulated the bidding price or the liquidation threshold had to be at least 95% of the NFT floor price and gave borrowers 48 hours to pay down loans before the liquidation. Uh, that has driven potential bidders away from the auction site since the prices weren't attractive and sparked investor concern that the price of the collateral was falling below the current the amount of debt outstanding. So then, therefore, the DAO initiated a proposal. This happened on Monday, in which the platform will lower the liquidation threshold to 70% from that initial 95% and reduce the window for the borrowers to pay down their loans to avoid liquidation for uh, two four hours from those original 48 hours. Uh, the new terms aim to make it easier to liquidate NFTs, which have seen less liquidity amid the bear market. So as you can kind of see, this bear market uh, it is not anything to play with. Uh, bear market, what they also call the crypto winter, uh, when the markets pretty much take a downward tail uh, trail. Um, 
And um, yeah, I mean, any, anything can happen because, you know, investors do not want to lose their money. Uh, you yourself, of course, do not want to lose your money. But, you know, it's, it's all a risk. It's just like the stock market, everything goes up, everything goes down, everything goes <laughs> whichever way the, uh, the market basically wants it to go at whatever point in time. So you just got to be careful. Again, me, myself, I don't think I would ever put up any NFT as an asset um, for something like that, as you know, just to borrow ETH. And I get the under the process of it. You know, they they want to flip their money, keep investing, do other stuff with it. Um, why hold on to an NFT that's worth millions when it's just you know it's just sitting there? If you could actually lend it out, and then from there take that um, ETH or Bitcoin or whatever altcoin, and then um, from there invest that, make more money off of it. So it's kind of like, you know, your, your, your NFT is working for you, even though, you know, you don't do too much with it. But again, that's that, that's that risk factor. You know, you gotta, you gotta prepare for that as well. All right. So the next thing that I have for you guys here today is going to be the word of the week. And as I mentioned, the word of the week is IPFS, which actually isn't a word. It's, it's a acronym for interplanetary filing system. And it really is just that it's a filing system in which you don't have to worry about um, any of your data kind of getting hacked and you losing it. So what they're saying here is that it's a peer to peer hypermedia protocol designed to preserve and grow humanity's knowledge by making the web upgradable, resilient and more open. Um, the web of tomorrow needs IPFS today. I 100% agree with that. Um, so essentially just a quick breakdown. This is just the website here, IPFS.tech and a quick breakdown of it. So currently right now, the way that everything happens when we upload, um, like a file or anything to, I won't call it just the cloud, but you know, to any server that's out there, um, for any company or something like that. So essentially if you think about your own computer or your own cell phone or something like that. Uh, you take a picture, leave it on your cell phone. Anything ever happens to your cell phone, gets what? Your picture is gone. Uh, that's why a lot of people like the cloud because even if something happens to their cell phone, they upload it to the cloud, they can always get it again. But then what happens if something happens to the cloud? Like this, say Amazon or Google, you put yourself on Google Photos or anything like that. You end up, you know, if Google gets hacked, you end up losing, you know, your information from there. Uh, the way that IPFS kind of changes things is that it's not just going to store your data. It's not just going to store your files in one central location. It is going to now decentralize it, meaning that it will now take it from just that one location and basically split it up into multiple different other locations. So say, for example, if you had, instead of just one phone, you took a picture of it, you had 50 phones, you took a picture and that picture is basically spread out between all 50 of those phones. Anything happens to the one phone that you had, guess what? All you got to do is go grab another phone from wherever location and you have all your pictures once again. So the way the IPFS works is that it allows you to have all of your data in multiple different, what they call nodes and stuff like that, that where if someone gets hacked, let's say for example, Facebook gets hacked and you had some stuff on Facebook or whatever, you can now from then on go to, I mean, you can still pull up your information because everything is on IPFS. So IPFS is just going to say, oh, hey, I can't grab it from this location. Let me just go over here and grab it from this location or that location or that location and wherever else it may be at um, and so on and so forth. So you never actually lose any of your data. Yeah. Um, today's web can preserve. Oh, another good thing about it also I just thought about is that, um, um, versioning. So if you end up changing the version from like version one, version two, version three, version four of some data set, it'll actually continue on, uh, remembering all of those different versions. Again, all of this stuff is being done via web three. So that it stays on the blockchain. Um, yeah, today's web is centralized, limiting the opportunity. Today's web is addicted to backbone. Uh, I think this is all today's web stuff. Uh, install WPFS, IPFS. Uh, how does it work? So when you add a file to IPFS, your file is split into smaller chunks. 
cryptographically hashed and given a unique fingerprint called a content identifier or a SID. This SID acts as a permanent record at your file as it exists at that point of time. When other nodes look up your file, they ask their peer nodes who's storing the content referenced by this SID when they view or download your file. They copy, they copy a cache of it and become another provider of your content until their cache is cleared. A node can pin content in order to keep and provide it forever or discard content it hasn't uh, used in a while to save space. This means each node in the network stores only content it is interested in, plus some indexing information that helps figure out which node is storing what. If you add a new version of your file to IPFS, its cryptographic hash is different, and so it is given a new SID. This means files stored on IPFS are resistant to tampering and censorship. Again, that's what I meant by the um, the versioning. It keeps the version one, version two, version three of it every time you upload a new file. Any changes to a file don't overwrite the original file and common chunks across files can be reused in order to minimize storage costs. Um, so for example, if you had like say for example, your resume, if you want to resave your resume, well just, I don't know, let's say you got married and your last name changed. Um, everything else about your resume stay the same, it's just your last name changed, so you have to update your resume with that. So instead of re-uploading a whole brand new resume with just that one change, all those bits of chunks will all remain the same except for the one bit chunk, which would be the last name. So it actually saves space on that. Um, however, this doesn't mean you need to remember a long string of SIDs. IPFS can find the latest version of your file using the IPNS, which is a decentralized naming system and DNS link can be used to map SIDs to human readable DNS names. All right, so I hope all of that does make sense to you guys. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. If you want to look further into IPFS, definitely go to their website. Also, if you go to, I think it's not just IPFS.tech, if I'm not mistaken, it's going to be uh, the docs. So the documentation page, which is docs.ipfs.tech. Yeah, here we go. So this is a docs page. Um, and then you can actually... You, you can really just go down deep into what IPFS is uh, just by reading through their, their documentation and stuff like that. Any company that I that I look into, I always look and see if they has the docs available. Alrighty. So now we are jumping over here to web browser. So again, we all know what a web browser is. We use it literally every single day. I don't care if you're an Android user or an iPhone user, you, <laughs> you use the internet. Uh, some way somehow and you're using a web browser and a web browser is just how you browse the web to search for different things Google Chrome being probably one of the main ones Opera being another big one Safari uh, Brave browser uh, who actually has their own brave token. I've been using this for a long time But I recently just came across another one called Osiris and I want to see how it's stacked up against the other companies Which it actually does pretty well uh, I'm not going to read through this whole entire article, but I just want to talk about the Osiris browser here. And uh, it's a Web3 web browser designed to be blockchain friendly. Osiris browser is powered by Ascent, and it is an excellent blockchain uh, based web browser. The difference between Osiris and Opera or Brave is that unlike others, Osiris browser is more consumer centered and always has its users needs in mind. Um, Osiris is a single existing web browser that integrates numerous blockchain networks all into one platform. Uh, they do this by providing a multi-wallet called, <clears throat> called MetaWallet that actually embeds a wallet in the browser and then supports various cryptocurrencies. And I believe this is both desktop, laptop, tablet, cell phone, what have you. You can always um, download and use this new uh, Osiris browser. So the Osiris Meta Wallet can only be used with the Osiris browser and no extensions are currently available for other browsers. Um, Meta Wallet is more secure than the existing extension wallets. Additionally, it supports not only ETH and ACE, which is their Ascent, um, Ascent token, but also well, recently also uh, included um, Tron into its league 
in the future, many more prominent networks uh, such as BSC and DOT will also be integrated into the Meta Wallet. Osiris browser is a blockchain based browser that also has basic browser functionalities covered and has an uh, intuitive UI for better user experience. Uh, Osiris supports the DAP store, decentralized app store, a DAP total marketplace that mainstreams uh, decentralized applications. Alrighty. Uh, so yeah, so let me, I'm gonna just jump over here to the Osiris browser here real quick. Uh, I do have a video I'm gonna play. It's a YouTube video, just real quick. Welcome to the next evolution of web browsers. With Osiris, you will experience increased speeds that are three to seven times faster than other browsers. It blocks all the annoying pop-up ads and trackers, allowing you to watch your favorite videos without any ad interruptions. Lower your data charges and save money. Most importantly, protect your privacy. It's really a no-brainer. Try Osiris now. Try Osiris now. Um, so yeah, so this is their website. Block ads, block tra trackers. You can binge watch YouTube for hours without any interruptions. This is probably going to be the one that I'm probably most excited for because I sometimes I watch like podcasts on YouTube hour and some change long. And I mean, I don't mind commercials. I don't mind advertisements, but sometimes you think get advertisements on there and the advertisement is longer than the actual video you're watching itself. And I'm like, all right, something's broken on the algorithm. That doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, I mean, of course I can hit skip ad, but I like to listen to some things while I'm cooking or while I'm cleaning and stuff like that. And I don't want to have to stop just to hit skip ad, you know? So, um, yeah, you can browse faster, save money uh, by preventing unnecessary data charges uh, used by intrusive ads. Protect your privacy, of course. Uh, access the DApp store. Get all these cool blockchain games. Access NFTs and stuff like that as well. Um, so, yeah, so you guys definitely check out the Bra uh, not Brave Osiris browser. Uh, sounds like they are really the first Web3 based one. Um, and it actually, you know, it actually, in my opinion, seems pretty good. I don't, I don't I haven't used it yet. I plan to actually do download it and start, start using it, uh, install it on my computer or whatever. And just to kind of, you know, pick around and see how it actually works out. Um, hope for the best on that one. And for the last thing that I have here is going to be all about PlayStation. PlayStation has now just announced that it will be launching in 2023 their VR headset number two. Uh, I did not ever play the VR headset number one. I have the Oculus. I may or may not get the PSVR number two. I am looking forward to the Apple one myself. But to all those PlayStation people out there, you may just want to stick around for, if you plan on getting to VR anytime soon, you may just want to stick around for the uh, PlayStation VR 2. Yeah, so it is now since launch window, the company confirmed today on Instagram, uh, which that date was August the 22nd, so about two days ago, uh, confirmed on Instagram of all the places that the headset release date will come in early 2023, but shared absolutely no other info about the headset's launch. Granted, we know almost everything there is to know about PSVR 2 by this point, except for its actual price. The early 2023 launch window, which probably will be in Q1 of 2023, is going to be a curious move by Sony. The company has only ever launched major P PlayStation hardware in Q3 or Q4, dating all the way back to the original PS1 and including the first PSVR headset. I'm assuming they're doing this because of Apple. Me personally, I think they're trying to, you know, get right in with them. They're probably going to try and price below Apple also. So when Apple come out, people might look at it and say, oh man, that's too expensive. What else is out there in the market? They're going to say PSVR 2 just launched. People are going to want to, you know, jump to that way. So that may be their marketing scheme on that one. Not sure though. Um, yeah, our best guess is that uh, move is Sony is expecting to ongoing global supply chain and inflation issues that cause chaos in the electronics market this holiday, and it doesn't want to battle other consumer electronics makers on price. 
Uh, in any case, we finally have an idea of when the PSVR 2 will actually launch. Sony is promising that PSVR 2 will offer an innovative VR experience with many features not currently found in other consumer headsets like eye tracking, HDR, head haptics. Ooh, head haptics, okay. And advanced trigger haptics, okay. Interesting. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I just kind of read a comment. Um, they said, make it three ninety nine and send me a pre-order no notification. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I highly doubt it'd be three ninety nine, but we'll see. All right, so that is all I have for you guys today. Let me know what you guys think. I'm really curious to know what you guys think about the um, that metaverse pill or whatever they call it. Oh, I think I don't think I've I mentioned. So the pill itself, I'm thinking is that uh, when you're kind of going through the person's body, you may be able to have like a VR headset or use awesome sort of augmented reality um, to view, you know what's going on inside the person's body. So that may be why they're trying to say it's a metaverse. Again, I don't, I don't, I don't really agree with it being a metaverse though. It's, it's, it's the technology. Yeah, for sure. It's something digital. Yeah. You get to use a controller to, to power a drone and stuff like that. But metaverse, mm, y'all, y'all pushing it at that point. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. The comments is always open to you guys. Uh, my DMs are always open to you guys as well. Hit me up on my social media channels. Check out all the links inside the description for this video as well. And until next time, I will see you guys later. Take care.